next shape is a circle. Now, a circle is quite easy. In this case, we're looking at area, so you need to make sure you use the right rule for this one. The area of a circle is pi times r times, oh, squared, sorry. So that looks like this one here. Pi times radius squared. Now, I put on here both radius and diameter. Now, diameter is from side to side, but it has to pass directly through the middle. Radius goes from the middle to the only one side, it does not go all the way through. So radius, and I'll put it down here for you so you can remember, radius equals diameter divided by two. So it's the same thing, but it's divided by two. So 20 divided by two gives you your radius, in this case, 10. So what we're going to do is we've got pi now I'm going to bring pi up here so you can make sure you can see. Pi equals 3.1416. Okay, so you can round it off to 3.142 if you like, but it continues forever basically, so we'll just take it to four decimal places. So we've got pi times radius. Now in this case it's 10, but because of the square, it's basically saying 100. So pi times 100. All we're going to do with our decimal place is move two spots. One, two, and we're going to put it right there, okay, because we've times it by 100. Now, it could doesn't work always that easily depending on which number our radius is. So, pi times 100 equals 314.16, and then we put our centimeters squared. Now, you have to be careful on this one just in case you're doing perimeter, okay? Now we call that circumference, so you shouldn't have a P, you should really have a C, okay, for circumference. Now the circumference can be two pi R or um, pi times diameter. So it's nice and simple. Two times pi times R is exactly the same as pi times D. Instead of t making the 20 into 10, just keep it. So, but that's only circumference. Do not do that for area. All right, I'm going to pause it there. I'll come back to you. Okay, here we basically work like it is a um, a circle, but in this case, we've only got a part of a circle, so we have to act like it is a part of a circle. The way we do that is we actually look at our little bit of our section here. Now what this bit oops my pen's not working. What this bit is showing you is that it's the breakdown. It gives you the percentage of the circle that we're looking for. And then this little symbol is talking about our the angle that we're using, which is this bit right here. Okay? In this case we're make it, gonna make that angle 20 degrees. Okay, so we know what it is. We also know that our radius is 10. Why do I use 10? Because it's just really simple to be able to square. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is actually set it out like this. So we have the amount of degrees that we're using over 360, because there is 360 degrees in a circle. So we're only using 20 degrees of that circle. Okay, this just gives you the percentage. Well, basically, it gives you it in a decimal form though. Okay. So just have to remember that. Now, basically what we're going to do is we divide 20 by 360. Now that gives you 0.556 as an answer. Okay, so that's going to be what this equals. In the end, all we're going to do then, now you can put that in the calculator as 20 over 360. And then we're going to times it by pi times your radius. In this case, it's 10 and squared again. Okay, now we know this equals 314.16. Okay, so we put all that into the calculator, like we showed you before, and it ends up being 17.45 centimeters squared. Okay, so we get our decimal by doing the, the division here, times it by pi r squared, and you get your answer. All right. So this one's slightly bigger, as you can see, it's pretty much three quarters of the circle. Okay, now when I say that, we're using 270 degrees. 
Okay, so that's quite often will be given to you in here. You'll have it set written down. Okay, so we first of all need to find the decimal. Okay, that we're going to be using to find out how much of that circle we're doing because it's not a full circle. So first of all, in your calculator, you're going to put 270 divided by 360. In this case, it equals 0.75. Okay, it is three quarters. Okay, then we put in times our pi. Now I'm going to make this radius 5 just for something different. So in here we're going to have 5 squared. Now we know this is 25. So you're expecting pi times 25 to be roughly 75, a little bit over, maybe 78. Okay, so you put that into the calculator. 0.75 times this um, pi r squared and basically you press equals and you're going to get your answer which is going to be 58.9. Now it is a little bit different, as in it goes 0 0.04, but it's not going to change. So I'm rounding up to one decimal place and make sure you put your centimeters squared. Otherwise, you won't be right. Moving on. Here we have the ellipse. You guys might see it as an oval. It could be an egg shape, but an oval is usually what we'd call it. Okay. Again, there's two things we need to know. We need to know our A and we need to know our B. So we've got A here and we've got B. So all we're going to do is nice and simple. We're going to get area. We're going to go equals. We're going to have pi again, so 3.1416. And we're going to times that simply by 2 and by your 3. Now I'm going to leave that one for you because I think you guys can do that. All right. So what I want from you is for now you're going to actually come in and give me that answer. This is what you have to do. Alright, so I'm going to move on.